here's what we got going on today, fam. We're going to be putting a brand new s &B cold air intake on the old 24 valve truck. Reagan's been loving this whole 24 valve thing lately. See, here's the thing. I never said 24 valves were bad trucks. I said they're good trucks, but I said if you're a younger guy or not even necessarily a younger guy, but just somebody who's a little tighter on funds, you want to get into the, into the diesel game, you want to have fun, you want to work on a truck and you want it to be cheaper to build, cheaper to maintain, cheaper to fix, and just all around, you know, more affordable because they're usually a little bit cheaper. Now compared to new trucks, it's way cheaper still in a 24 valve. But I'm saying if you had to pick between older trucks that are almost same generation, same body style, just different engine, it's just a preference. But she's been enjoying this whole 24 valve thing because I love this truck. I'm trying to convert him. I never said they were bad trucks. I just <laughs> said if you're more in a budget, a little tighter on funds, but you wanted to get into a diesel, 12 is just the way to go. But, but if happening. you're winning a truck for free, then shoot, by all means, just win it, you know? Which, by the way, every $15 you spend on LP merch, not this, this isn't LP merch that we've ever sold, really. This is like a company messed up our order, so they sent us a bunch of free hoodies in re to replace them, and they weren't anything close to the actual stuff. But, anyways, we do have new hats, hoodies, t shirts, beanies, all sorts of stuff on the website. Definitely go check it out. It is a lot of cool stuff, and you guys can actually pick stuff that you want that fits your style and your taste, and get entered to win this truck. Let's get into the video. Rule number one to installing an intake on a second gen. Make sure you have all of the tools that are essential, that being a screwdriver, and you can pretty much completely rebuild a second gen from the ground up. It's just about all you need. Look at that, gone. Turbo wheel, while you're in here, just make sure it's not moving up or down. It can move in and out a little teeny tiny bit. Not much, I'm talking like a hair. And just freely spin with a very, very slight resistance. But don't, you don't ever want a turbo wheel that can just like bend around, you know what I'm saying? Oh, by the way, for all the links to the products that we're installing this truck or a previous giveaway truck or whatever, usually through the time that we have the truck, there's a list in the description below with the full build list on the truck of the things that we have put on the truck and some things that we are going to be putting on the trucks. But anyway, so there's always links to the products that we've used in the description below. If you want to do the exact same thing to your truck, you're looking for ideas, check out the parts in the description below. It's broken up into the different build lists. Usually the trucks that we've kept on the channel for a long amount of time or we plan on keeping, the build list stays. But for trucks that we have in short term, usually just all the videos with the truck, the giveaway trucks, until the giveaway truck's gone, the lists are available under those videos with the truck, but after the giveaway truck's gone, the videos will no longer have the links under there. But if you guys want to check out the build list, links in the description. That way you guys don't have to message me and ask for the links. It'll just it'll all be there. So we're going to get this intake installed. It should be pretty freaking easy. All we had to do was attach the rubber, you know, parts, and then put this on there, and then we just need to throw it in there. Put the intake part down in there, the filter. And then uh, pretty much good. Just tighten, tighten down a couple band clamps with a flathead and call her good. Here we are with the final product. The s and cold air intake is in the truck and this is a true cold air intake and it pulls the air from the side fender which is where the air flows through and pulls the air through so however that works. Anyways, so that is the complete cold air intake install. It's very, very simple. If you guys wanna grab one of these for your second gen, it's 24 valve or 12 valve, it's same fitment either way. Link is in the description in the build list for the 24 valve dually build and um, very easy to put in takes a total of maybe 15 minutes tops and then we've got the SNB intake elbow on this side and then it just kind of ties into the engine bay and the valve cover factory colors and all that jazz and I think it looks looks really good it's really simple but it's very clean and uh, just those two upgrades alone will provide a much better airflow and cold airflow um, addition to the truck. Now the other stuff that was in here was just like a factory 
pipe hose with just an intake slapped on, which you have to keep in mind. Some trucks, there's not really like much of an option, kind of like first gens, they just drop an intake like down in the freaking, you know, in the fender down by the bumper. But like there's not many options for it for an actual true cold air intake versus in a truck like this, if you have the option, pulling in actual cold air that's not from like right up against the manifold and stuff is usually the best way to do it if you can. Um, but if you don't have an option, obviously that's one thing, but cold air is definitely gonna produce more power than just a lot of hot air, just so you know, because cold air and airflow in general, and preferably cold airflow is what makes power. So just some random tips for you guys if you guys wanna take notes. We're trying to address the problem with the first gen, and basically what it was is there was too much of an angle with this temporary line that um, we had put on there. What had happened was this line come, came down and it bent over like this and it was kind of like fished up like that. But then it, with all the pressure, it ended up kinking up and just kind of like popping the line and it had a leak spraying out of it pretty bad. Like as soon as you start up, that line like expanded and it just was just spraying fluid. So we went and got some new line that's a little bit more snug fit. This should, at least for the time being, fix our issue. We're gonna slide up a little bit more and that way a little bit more and we should be good and we should, uh, Fix that trans leak. Well, we did get the little transmission line leak thing fixed, and uh, it was pretty simple to address. If you look under here, if I can show it to you, I don't know what you're seeing in there, but I'm going to try to get as close as I can by guessing. If you look right there, that line, there's too much of an angle and it created a leak, but it's good now and it's not leaking any fluid. Leaking a little bit of oil, of course, because of the rear main leak, but in terms of trans fluid, that is not the problem currently. So that is addressed and we are gonna start the truck up here, take it on down the road and just make sure everything's shifting smooth again and running good, at least for the time being with what's done to it and hopefully it's all good. You ready? are a little bit toasty from running it with no trans fluid. Hopefully it still ships. Some bittersweet information, but we all knew it was coming. This truck does have a lot of blow by. Just look, and this has been sitting for like five minutes. And just look at the stuff here. I'll let it build up first. The truck's not even running. And look at the stuff that comes out of here. It's hard to tell. But anyways, if that's not bad, let me show you something else. This dipstick, look at that. It's got like a milky, here can you hold the dipstick here so I can show them? It's got like a milky, um, here let me try to get some of this off here. It's got like a milky substance on the dipstick and it's a little bit a uh, little bit sad but to be quite honest we kind of figured it was that day was coming not to mention this blow by tube here if you check this right here that thing is constantly like puffing out some white smoke I mean it's not uh, it's not very pretty although the transmission leak doesn't exist anymore now it's more of just like an oil leak so you know, the oil leak's always been there, though. That's kind of been there since I bought the truck. But it is, uh, <laughs> the blow-by in this thing is pretty bad now. And I wish there was anything I could really do about it other than either swap a new engine or rebuild this engine. However, I'm not really into that kind of thing. Um, honestly, I only would do it if I absolutely had to. But that's not really the type of thing we want to really take on here just because I'd rather buy another, I'd rather sell this, buy another one, with a lot less miles and just work on it than you know be five grand into in a complete engine swap and finding a new engine have somebody do all the work and putting all the new parts on and all that crap like it would just not it just doesn't doesn't make sense for my application let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about the first gen and how unfortunate that is also the intake on this truck and if you have not done so yet enter to win this truck the giveaway for this thing ends may 13th 
at 11.59 p.m. So do not miss out, enter while you can. You've got about 27-ish, 28 days until this giveaway for this truck is over, and one of you could be taking home the keys to this big freaking dually. So think about that. Information is in the description below. Every $15 you spend gets you another entry to win. It's very simple. We have all kinds of hoodies, t-shirts, hats, all kinds of stuff. Go check it out. Information, like I said, is in the description below. Leave a fat thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, join the team, join the family, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.